Doug Barfield's fourth edition of the Auburn Tigers opened the 1979 season against Kansas State in Jordan-Hare Stadium, figuring to be a force in the national rankings. As with any team, there were questions. One was answered early in the first quarter when senior James McKinney showed his 1977 All-SEC form with this interception. And in the first play following, the Auburn offense lived up to preseason billing as senior Charlie Trotman put the first points on the board on this 39-yard run. Kansas State came back to lead 12 to 10 going to the fourth quarter when Freddie Smith grabbed this interception and put on a spectacular show. A penalty nullified the interception, but the Auburn defense held and Joe Cribbs set the Tigers up in good field position with his punt return. Again, on the first play from scrimmage, Trotman converted, finding Byron Franklin uncovered, and the junior wide receiver wins the foot race. Finally, with 138 remaining, Ken Luke shut off the last Kansas State hopes keying Auburn to a come-from-behind 26-18 opening victory. <laughs> Auburn is at home again for game number two, facing a tough Southern Mississippi team, which has historically given the Tigers trouble. But today, the Auburn defense takes charge, first with this perfectly timed interception and touchdown return of 38 yards by Jerry Beasley. a 17-6 lead at halftime. Then early in the third quarter, Trotman again runs the option to perfection for this 29-yard touchdown. <laughs> then midway through the fourth quarter, he puts the game away again, finding Byron Franklin behind the secondary. the Auburn defense that dominated the day with 14 tackles behind the line of scrimmage, totaling 89 yards in losses. Final score, Auburn 31, Southern Mississippi 9. <laughs> Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. The Tigers have dominated the Volunteers in the 70s, winning seven of nine previous games. But today, emotions were high in Tennessee. 
The balls returned the opening kickoff for a score. Then Auburn came back to quiet the crowd with a dominating 80-yard drive keyed by this Trotman run. And climaxed by this dive into the end zone by Joe Cribbs. First half, Bob Harris picks off a Jimmy Streeter pass to set up an Auburn field goal. Tennessee got a late score and led 28 to 10 at the half, but early in the third quarter, James Brooks explodes down the sideline to get Auburn back in the game. Volunteers hold Auburn off in the fourth period to go on to win 35 to 17. The Tennessee game was a costly one in many ways as Auburn returned home to face 14th ranked North Carolina State with four defensive starters lost to injury. And it showed early as the Tigers fell behind 14 to nothing before Chester Willis came off the bench late in the first quarter to inspire the team and the home crowd. run on the last play of the first quarter sets up this touchdown run by Cribs to open the second quarter. Then Danny Skutak caused this fumble recovered by senior Ken Hardy. And on the first play from scrimmage, sophomore Charles Thomas keeps the ball on the option, and in a space of 63 seconds, Auburn's back in the game. On the Tigers' next possession, Thomas keeps again. Sets up another touchdown, putting Auburn in the lead. Then with only 57 seconds remaining, James Brooks caps an explosive 28-point quarter with this run. And Auburn leads at intermission by 28 to 17. period Frank Warren causes a Wolfpack fumble and Joe Cribbs wastes no time converting <laughs> then late in the third period Charles Thomas puts the game away as he beats the North Carolina State Blitz Final score, Auburn 44, North Carolina State 31.
Tigers are looking for their first SEC victory to add to the newfound momentum, and points were not long in coming against Vanderbilt. As on the game's second play, James Brooks exploded for 79 yards off right tackle to give the Tigers a lead they never lose. scored the first three times it had the ball, but in the second period, Bandy cut the lead to 21 to 14 when Joe Krebs turned the momentum again, going 77 yards to the two, scoring on the next play. The Tigers put the game away in the third period as Johnny Green intercepts and returns for 33 yards. Next play following the interception, James Brooks converts. Then after an Auburn goal line stand, Joe Cribbs explodes again for 58 yards. quarter Cripps scores to give the Tigers a 45 to 28 lead Bandy cut the lead to 10 late in the game but Chester Willis rambles 17 yards for a final touchdown a 52-35 Auburn victory. The Tigers travel to Atlanta to face Georgia Tech, and the early game explosiveness demonstrated against Vanderbilt is apparent again. On the Tigers' first play, James Brooks takes the option pitch from Trotman and rambles 68 yards behind perfect execution and a key block by Joe Cribbs to give Auburn the early lead. Then late in the quarter, Charles Thomas comes off the bench to key a 59-yard drive with his pass to Mark Robbins. Then Foster Christie and George Portella engineer this fake field goal shuttle pass to Willie Huntley for a key first down, setting up an Auburn touchdown. Auburn continues to dominate in the second period. Here, Trotman finds Robbins again in the end zone for a 21 to nothing halftime lead. The Jackets scored twice in 11 seconds to cut the Auburn lead to seven before George People sweeps left on this power run. It sets up another touchdown. Then late in the game, Charles Thomas comes off the bench again and goes 34 yards. That sets up this touchdown run by Willie Huntley. Making the final score, Auburn 38, Georgia Tech 14. Tigers put their number 14 national ranking on the line under beautiful Carolina skies against a Wake Forest team enjoying its best season in history. And again, Auburn grabs the early initiative. After a Fortella field goal, James Brooks scores on this spectacular extra effort run.
Hawkins come back to take a 14 to 10 lead before Charles Thomas comes off the bench for 22 yards again to key the go ahead drive. As Wake Forest goes to the air again, Freddie Smith steps in front of this pass. But the Tigers turn the ball back and leading 21 to 20, Charlie Trotman keys a 70 yard drive. First with this pass to Rusty Bird. Then finding Byron Franklin in the end zone. Late in the first half, James McKinney picks off this in the air fumble by Kenny Duckett. only 12 seconds to go in the half, George Portella kicks a 45-yard field goal to highlight another 28-point quarter for the Explosive Tigers. The Tigers are held out of the end zone in the second half, though, as Wake Forest rallies to a 42-38 victory. And returns to Jordan Hare to regroup for the all-important stretch run in the Southeastern Conference, facing first the Florida Gators. After a scoreless first period, converted quarterback Ken Luke, making his first start in the secondary, turns in this big interception and return of 36 yards. Setting up an Auburn touchdown. Tigers led 7-3 at halftime. Then in the third period, McKinney intercepts again. The interception leads to this 52-yard field goal by Portella, his career longest. And later in the third quarter, this Trotman to Franklin 49-yard pass sets up another Portella field goal. Finally in the fourth quarter, Trotman finds senior tight end Mike Locklear in the corner of the end zone to seal a 19-13 Southeastern Conference victory. Tigers are ranked 18th as they break out the orange jerseys for homecoming against a tough physical Mississippi State team. After another scoreless first period, Charlie Trotman leads Auburn on an 80-yard 16-play drive, highlighted by this Trotman run. and Brooks add the finishing touches and Auburn leads 7 to nothing. Then after a long drive by the Bulldogs, the Auburn defense comes to life as Frank Warren blocks this field goal attempt. James 
McKinney ends this state drive, and at halftime, Auburn has a 7-0 advantage. of this game was freshman Darrell Wilkes covering all SEC receiver Marty McDowell one-on-one -on -one throughout the day as he does here on a key fourth down late in the game. McDowell had only one reception in this game. With Auburn leading 7-3, James Brooks puts the dogs away with another patented run and excellent downfield blocking by Rusty Bird. And the Tigers win homecoming 14-3 over Mississippi State. against Georgia in the South's oldest football rivalry. For Georgia, a victory means at least a share of the SEC title and a Sugar Bowl trip. Auburn has already clinched its best season in five years, but the Tigers have great pride and seize the upper hand early when Skip Johnston punts dead at the Bulldog 2. on the first Georgia play. Quarterback Buck Ballou is sacked in the end zone by Frank Warren. After the free kick, this cribs run sets up a touchdown, and with only nine minutes gone, Auburn has a nine to nothing lead. Early in the second period, James Brooks breaks off left tackle for 45 yards to give Auburn field position again. But a bad exchange on a field goal attempt loses the ball, and at halftime, Georgia leads 10-9. Early in the third period, Georgia's on the move again when sophomore Bob Harris of Atlanta grabs this pass. Then late in the quarter, Trotman turns up field, and Brooks takes the late pitch, 66 yards to put Auburn ahead. Then in the fourth quarter, they team up again. This one goes 44 yards, and Auburn has its biggest margin of victory over Georgia since 1954. The final score, Auburn 33, Georgia 13. Legion Field in Birmingham. Just as Auburn had taken the Sugar Bowl bid from Georgia two weeks earlier, they could return it to the Bulldogs by beating Alabama. And the Tigers drew first blood, driving 50 yards, capped by a 47-yard Portella field goal.
Alabama leads 14 to 3 though in the third period when Edmund Nelson knocks the ball free and Freddie Smith claims it for Auburn. It sets up another Portela field goal. Then late in the third period, Trotman finds Cribs in the flat on this third down pass, and he leaves a trail of would-be tacklers on his way to the end zone. In the fourth quarter, on another third down play, Trotman finds Franklin behind the secondary for 55 yards. Three plays later on another third down, Mark Robbins breaks free in the end zone to give Auburn the lead at 18 to 17 with 11.30 to go in the game. Alabama came back to take a seven point lead midway through the fourth quarter, but on the ensuing kickoff, Brooks electrified the 77,000 in attendance. Tigers moved to the Alabama 24, then this fourth down pass fell off the fingers of Mike Locklear, and the Auburn comeback fell seven points short. The 18 seniors of 1979 represent the first graduating class recruited by Coach Doug Barfield. As a team, their record improved each year, and they left Auburn nationally ranked for the first time in five years. The tandem of Joe Cribbs and James Brooks were the first combination in SEC history to have two backs over a thousand yards. And Freddie Smith leaves as the leading tackler in AU history. But with an experienced defense and offensive line, and James Brooks returning as a definite Heisman Trophy candidate, Auburn looks forward to 1980 football Saturday. <laughs>